I'm going to a semi-dark site in my area at least to scout out some positions. And over there tonight I'm planning to photograph the constellations like never before. Alright, let me explain. Sometimes on a clear night you just don't have the time to get out and set up the telescope for a deep sky adventure. In my case I had a physics exam on the next day and I needed enough sleep and brain power. That's why I took some new equipment to a semi-dark spot in my area and photographed the constellations without a star tracker. In astronomy the precise term for a constellation is an asterism. In a more generous definition, an asterism is an apparent group of objects in the night sky. The brightest ones have been named centuries ago and are known to us as constellations. Today the International Astronomy Union lists 88 official constellations, which are supposed to resemble objects, animals or humans. They are helpful for learning about and navigating our night sky, but many people see them as 2D images assigning random properties that are purely fictional. I remember a story that my sister told me. In her vet clinic a client wanted to get surgery for their pet. Both my sister and her boss suggested a delay of a few weeks to ensure the pet was in a better condition. But the client insisted on the original favorable date because Saturn was close to Sagittarius. I think it's important to remind us that these objects, animal or human, are purely fictional and viewed from a different direction no longer resemble our familiar shapes. This is the equipment I've been using to take the images you will see at the end of this video. The only problem is the camera I used is filming right now, so I'm replacing it with a different model. To take proper images of the constellations you'll need a solid tripod, a lens with large aperture and optional a shutter cable and a filter. The shutter cable is to avoid camera shake during the release and to chain more exposures if the camera does not support interval shooting. But your finger is not the only source of vibrations. The flip of the mirror alone can cause the camera to shake enough. If your camera supports the mirror lock or has a silent shooting mode, consider it for better performance. For example, my Canon's silent mode opens the shutter with a short time delay after the mirror to avoid the shake. Taking images of the constellations is a perfect way to start in this hobby. You are engaged with questions like How do I focus my lens? How do I work in manual mode? And do I need to track the stars? And furthermore, you start learning about celestial mechanics to avoid questions like Can I photograph Orion today? In July? This filter I've been talking about is not your typical astronomy filter. I'm used to filters being either 2 inch mounted or clip in types. But this one is a 10 by 10 cm glass panel. Envisioned by the master of low light photography himself, Alan Wallace. If you are following my channel you probably know about him, if not check him out, it's well worth it. The purpose of this filter is to enhance bright stars and their color, while diminishing the smaller stars, to make the constellations pop out into the foreground. My original plan was to use this filter for filming in the night and for time-lapse videos. But using it for its actual purpose? Why not? As soon as it's dark. I am on my way to the almost dark sky side. And as you can see, my small digital camera over here can't pick up that much light. And this here is the view through the DSLR. I'm trying to hold this very still because I'm at 50mm filming. And here we are. You might remember this place. Well, the lighting is not ideal. And the moon is out too. Looks quite pretty actually. You can see Orion in this live view without the filter yet. And I just realized that I didn't bring my headlamp. That's gonna be annoying. I apologize if this is a bit noisy. But I can't help it. I can maybe minimize it in post. Alright, let's take the camera. Hopefully not too muddy. 
As you can see, we have a beautiful Orion over there. Alright, I guess the video is not that much of a difference, but the images will be. And now I will take my first image of the constellations. First target, Orion. And here we have a beautiful Orion, look at that. I don't think that I will stack these, but maybe. Down there, look at Sirius. The brightest star in both hemispheres, the brightest star in our night sky, twinkles. Well, because from my latitude it's pretty low and it's the brightest, and the brighter the star, the more apparent it's twinkling. And if you get a camera on there, you can see all the color tones, that's amazing. There are not that many apparent or at least known constellations out here tonight, except for maybe this one up there. Here we have a small digital camera, and that is what it looks like. And to my eyes, this is not much different. All praise the power of aperture and DSLRs. I don't think I can make out anything good towards the south, but I want to take this shot of Taurus over here. Can I include the moon? I will try. This will make a nice composition if it works. With a view like this, I think it's most apparent how much aperture, a good camera, and of course a filter I can do. Street lights, house lights, and stars. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us.